it's time for some macrame. I sure am glad I got the whole Mormon Tabernacle chorus out here just for that. All right, all right, that's enough. You can stop now. Today's a lot of things. It's Christmas, so Merry Christmas. It's Thursday, so it's another day of Johnny. It's also the first Thursday where there isn't any cereal. I want to talk about something that relates to both Christmas and cereal. No, not you, Count Chocula. I want to talk about narrative. As humans, narratives affect us all. Narratives are in our myths, they're in our entertainment. They may be, in fact, how we encode and store information inside of our memories. A narrative is important to how we learn and improve upon our empathy. So I just want to focus on one thing, personal narrative. Now, I've been playing with this form of personal narrative for the past three years, which I hope you'll find interesting. Come on over to the drawing board and I'll show you what's going on. This all started with this one little Hello Kitty journal here that Shell got me for Christmas. And I was going to use it to quit smoking, so I was going to draw a cute little character every time I wanted to have a cigarette. But then I realized, oh hey, wait a second, I can actually start filling this full of all kinds of interesting thoughts. Every week, I would look back at what happened in the past week and summarize that every month. And then at the end of the year, I could summarize every month up. And it gave me a cohesive story over the past year. Now the second one, I didn't use as much. The layout of the daily and the weekly pages didn't work very well. But the third notebook was a lot more freeform. And that gave me a lot of freedom to try out different ideas. I wasn't stuck to one page per week. I could have one page span multiple days and I could go many weeks until my next entry. That worked a lot better. Basically, each day is a chance for me to construct the narrative of me. Each week is a chance for me to further refine that summary. And each month, is a chance again to further refine that summary, building a bigger, better, cohesive story. Hallelujah. Okay, Hallelujah. you can stop now, Hallelujah. guys. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do not ever invite the Mormon Tabernacle Choir to your house. They're awful. Hallelujah. I said you can stop it. So, about narrative, let me tell you a little story. Shell and I were talking about this difficult time in our life. She had one memory. I had a different memory. Having this journal gave me a chance to look back at this time with some honesty. And what I found was none too flattering. I had been lying to myself, which made me realize that a lot of what we remember about the past is really just lies that we tell ourselves. So it's not like we choose to do this. This is just an unconscious effect of how memories are stored. So this kind of journaling really gives us a chance to shape the lie that we tell ourselves. As a subject, you can't get away from your subjective nature. Perhaps that's what that Buddha guy was all on about with the Eightfold Path. Bloody moon pointers, am I right? My journal is full of shell. She's another protagonist in the story that is me. So, I love you, baby. It's you and me versus the world. Finally, I just want to touch really quickly on synchronicities and how they would relate to the story of you. Synchronicities are meaningful coincidences. Nothing more, nothing less. What they do do, <laughs> I just said do do, is give depth to your narrative, if you allow them. I don't want to get any deeper than this than to say that as humans, we are meaning imbuing into incidents machines. That is what we do. We find meaning in things. So work with it. Are there any cool things that you do with your journal? I'd like to know about them. So let me know in the doobly-doo down below. And next time, it'll be New Year. Party time. I'm Johnny. Merry Christmas, everybody. I'm Johnny. It's time for a macrame. Hey, you rotten little kid. Get out of my chair. Oh,